the main thing we want to see for cognition mm. versus just like versus just like a feedback system i guess it's just that when you have an intelligent creature that's making cognition you want to see the ability that it has to learn over time to change its behavior to be more efficient to be more practical for its survival and all of nature is not doing like, that is what you're saying yeah but it's like mm. I'm not saying that, but like they're they're the processes you see, like I guess like if grass evolves over time, uh -huh. like it's not making a decision. It's just like wait, why? It's just becoming so, the most effective thing. Mm, I see. And what is the distinction between a decision and a non decision? Like are do you believe in scientific determinism or are you for are you a proponent of free will? Honestly, I haven't made my decision on that, whether or not we have free will. But it does appear as though as if at least in the physical realm, right? Apart from, from something like you, could, you consider human choice, yourself, right? Because we make ourselves to think we're special in order to tell ourselves the stories that we tell ourselves, right? But really, I think it's more likely that we are a process of nature as everything else. I mean, I think that we're a process of nature. I don't think that we're really special. And when we look at the rest of nature, it's making perfect sense all the time, right? I wouldn't say that, though. Mm, go on. I mean, how does how is it perfect sense? Like, they're like your body can just have random defects. Like, you can just die because your body makes a mistake sometimes. It's ah, very mm. well tuned. Like, it's not perfect or anything like that. Uh, see, Sometimes see, but the problem, the problem is not. Yeah, the problem is. Not. Yeah, I, yeah, I love your approach. It's, it's very difficult to, to uh, have a discussion where we have arbitrary axioms based on our human biases, and that's what you're doing. You're saying I don't want to die, therefore death is bad. Whereas if we look well, at the system from I outside. Oh, okay. It, it seemed like an implication that you were saying we die, that is a bad thing. Like, what? like you know? No? No, I wasn't saying that at all. Oh, okay. I thought you said you could, you could have like physical or, or otherwise imperfections, and that could lead to things like death, and that's not perfect. Oh, well, you're talking about like, yeah, well, I guess I'm not understanding what you mean, but mm -hmm. the, the, I guess like the idea from the bio biologist's perspective is that your your goal is to survive as long as possible and to re produce as many copies of your genes as possible. Uh, and things like defects that, what we consider defects, things that kill you or reduce your ability to reproduce or to survive are things which are, from a biological perspective, not as fit for your environment, seem defects and then mm -hmm. the, well, the way evolution works and i mean i'm sure you understand this is it's just like you know those with the less desirable traits die out those with the better traits mm -hmm. pass on and that's the way things seemingly get improved but that's a question mark you know dawkins says that mm. we have the blind watchmaker or that's what evolution is <laughs> but, it's god without you know, a without a beard I, is it is it God or is it just like the rules of the game? Yeah, I mean you could call the rules of the of the game God, I think, or you could call it nature, or you could call it the universe, or you could call it everything. You know, I think I think the problem with with God that most of Western society has is the preconceptions of the Judeo Christian God that was instilled um, in in most of our our beliefs, societal beliefs, right? So there's always an association with the authoritative, single-minded figure that makes decisions on your behalf, and people don't like that. Understandably so. I think that the system can be self-regulating and still be an intelligent system, capable of producing you, intelligence. Yeah, but I think this system can be self-regulating without being intelligent. And yet, and yet you're an anomaly then. An accident. Oh, so you're saying you're... Uh, but seem, that seems rather unlikely when you analyze know. every other part of the system and you see that it all seems to work perfectly and and evolve or, or change or whatever in a way that is infinite. And you're saying from a biologist's perspectives, 
surely in in behalf of humanity which is one of the systems in the universe uh, you would rather it persevere than not because because we believe in the perseverance of the species or something like that right um but I mean, like evolutionarily that's the goal i i suppose biology. you could make that a goal yeah but i mean i mean uh, biology is a limited science right humanity has uh, a date of expiry or earth does at least right i mean earth does yes hmm. um, i mean who knows what la hold the future holds for humanity but sure. earth is definitely going to I mean, unless someone invents some radical technology where they can, like, alter the sun or something like mm -hmm. that, the whole planet's just going to get eaten by the sun. Yeah, I think I think this would be too far of a of a tangent to introduce, but um, I think I think that the universe, whether you attribute intelligence to it or not, is is an arbitrary choice of yours because what you like what you have to accept is that in the physical realm things seem to to follow newtonian physics basically right at the scale at which we exist would yeah. you including us because we're a phenomenon of, of 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 all of it right yeah and so in that sense do you see how choice what you call choice might be an illusion it might be, but it might not be. We really don't know. Well, what do you mean? I mean, how do we know whether or not we have free will? How will well, we, how would anyone ever determine that? Well, uh, then the stance that you're taking is that you are somehow special and different than the rest of the thing that does fall into its patterns. I mean, that could be or it could yeah. not be. We really don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it seems far more likely that that you being a process of the everything else are you know are not i'm not saying you're not special i'm saying everything else maybe is just every bit of special i don't know mm. i really don't know that's my answer that's the whole basis of science i don't know yeah sure but but my point is that you were proposing that a network of say mushrooms in the forest or a network of grass or trees functions much differently than than our brain right because you think but that it, what or no, because our brain is what connected with with tissue or like but why why is that why is that different then i don't so think you have systems in your body which are you know out of your control what do you mean you out know, of your control you, but but see here's the thing we've established that at, an, at a newtonian at a, okay but in a newtonian physical environment there is no such thing as your control can we can we please Agree on that. And then if you want to disagree with Newtonian physics and with... I don't know if I agree with that. I don't okay. know if I agree with that. That's well, like that's, the basic okay. uh, disagreement, though. Yeah. I, I mean, that's that's just the problem, right? Is that people come on behalf of science and enraged on behalf of science. And then when you, th when you say, hey, think about scientific determinism and how that actually works, they go, well, I don't know if that's true. It's like, well, that's convenient. Because all science is produced based on the assumptions that, that our environment is predictable, right? Yeah, that's true. So? But no one knows why that is. Is there a reasoning behind it? Mm. Or is there not? Is that is a, a great question. Or mm -hmm. is it not? Nobody knows that. We just uh, make so, the assumption and we operate mm. on that assumption. So we don't know why. So the way the way that it could be reversed, and I'm with you here. I'm just I'm I'm being a hard ass because I'm taking I'm taking the side of, hey, like you know, like I don't give a shit if you're a neuroscientist. Like hear me out, right? <laughs> but uh, but uh, but I'm with you in a certain sense because I I personally think that there is a a realm of consciousness which is what you are, right? Would you say you're that? I'm. I mean, sure. I don't know what consciousness is, though. This is what I'm saying. Um, like, okay. So not... how about how about the definition of consciousness as the ability of the universe to experience itself through you? I don't know if I like that definition. It's a perfectly not logical definition. Do you have a logical disagreement here to make? I mean, we are part of the universe, and mm. we do experience it, but mm. 
I guess that definition implies that... <laughs> Can you say it one more time? Let me hear what you said. I would say that you are the universe's, the universe's ability to experience itself. Sure, I'll, I think that in, from a certain perspective, that's fine. Um, yeah, I, I think that think is fine. More about that. Well, it, it's, it's a logical conclusion. It's just people are not willing to say it out loud or, you know, they are, they're at odds with it for some weird reason. Yeah, but are we, are we really part of the universe in that way, fundamentally? Uh, well, the other perspective... Systems, which I don't think that anyone really so, has... I mean, I, I mean, sure. That's the thing is you can, you, can, you can get lost in it and you can think that it's something different than what it is. But if you, if you look at all the things laid down before you, I think it's very difficult to make the argument that you are not a pattern of the system like everything else, that you do not follow Newtonian physics or that you do not, um, you know, do as everything else does. And it's, you know, it's kind of a, the system at large, it's, 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 it's pretty cool. Like it's, you know, the way that everything is working in tandem with other parts of the system. That's why it's yeah, called but, universe, but right? It's a single not, operating system. I'm not sure that any of the other steps in that system require any sort of intelligence at all. Is what um, I'm saying. I think we have different. I think we have yeah, different. Yeah. So, so you're saying you think you're maybe no. you're saying you think you're maybe special. Maybe. And no, you're maybe an accident. So everything else is not an accident, but you might be an accident. How? You, I'm. What if that's all an accident too? What do you mean by an accident? That's like I mean I mean that you are separating everything that came before you and before your operating system in the brain as unintelligent or something of the sorts even though it is the processes that made you. You were an amoeba and a billion years ago you were the big bang. And so the system was always capable of you. It it uh -huh. was an inevitability if you believe in scientific determinism, that things do follow a, an, an order by which we do science and we predict its behavior and, and we, you know, and we mold it to our, to our liking or, or, you know, that's a, an expression, obviously. I don't know. I think that your, I think that your position assumes that you understand more about the universe than I think anyone does. Really? So I you don't, don't think, what premise is really what premise is wrong then? Well, like he said that you think that you're special and that everything else. No, I don't think I'm a spe I'm, I don't think so. Right, that seems to be the implications of your statements. But I don't like I don't understand the the definition of intelligence that you're using or like what systems you're talking about. To be honest, because I would so think of the universe as a system as a system of vibrations and and of action potential. And it's all extremely complex, I would say, at a base level. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. That it's are you different than that? Or are you the same as that? I don't think that's a good question. Oh, okay, fair. Because I don't think that you can, I don't think you have to be different from the under, underneath layers mm -hmm. in order to develop a, a more or a different kind of complexity that then might not exist in other areas. Okay. Can non-intelligence then produce intelligence, you think? I don't know. I don't know what the fun I don't know what the fundamental like underlying hmm. nature of reality is. Mm -hmm. And I, I just I I really don't have any understanding of that. I really <laughs> I wish that we knew. I wish that we knew more things about how we got here, like how the universe was created. Let me ask you, were you, well, do you believe in the Big Bang Theory? Uh, yes, I do believe in the Big Bang Theory. Then logically, but... I ask you, were you the Big Bang a few billion years ago? Everything that makes you? As an intelligent human being? No, no. everything that makes you. The matter, yes. All the matter and energy, yes. Okay. But 
me as like a human being with a consciousness who has a personality now. So you're a pattern and that developed that is complex enough to produce itself an intelligence that separates from the rest of the universe in a sense. It's possible. Okay. It's possible that we're the only spot in the universe that has any sort of intelligence. Sure. And it won't last for very long and then it will be gone forever. I mean, that's it's not how time works though, really scientifically, right? Like if you look at how time works scientifically, it's all now in a certain sense. It's a big slice, if you would. So, so I mean, the human perception of, of past to present to future, I think scientifically we know is a little bit of an illusion. So when you say it's a, it's a little glimpse here and there, I mean, everything is now, I think. I no? mean, it depends on what dimension you're operating on. Mm. Because if, uh, if you're like a fourth dimensional being, then... Yeah, all time is existing at once, but if you're a three-dimensional three being like we are, mm -hmm. time is the distance between events. So I think that logically, from the perspective of the consciousness of someone who sees time pass it's mm -hmm. over their life, it makes sense to describe it that way. Absolutely. It makes sense to describe it in so long as we're communicating about our timely routines and with other human beings and so on and so forth. But but it's not so useful, I think, when you when you think of as yourself as a tiny speck in time, because you're always there for a four dimensional being. Right. Sure. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. So so you were always there an inevitability. Beginning to end, right? I don't know. I don't know how fourth dimensional existence mm. operates. I, see, I really yeah. don't know. Mm -hmm. There are things that sound really good to us that sound like they make a lot of sense, but we wouldn't so, be the mm. first people to, you know, try to logic things out and be proven wrong by data later on. You know, the funny thing is I think that these observations that I'm describing have been made throughout the entirety of humanity by every single culture. But so, yeah, I, I agree. We won't be the first or the last. I certainly won't be. But, you know, we can turn an, a blind eye to that and say, hey, you know, like consciousness, it's not very scientific. We, you know, it's only through self-reported evidence that you know of it, right? I mean, I wouldn't say that consciousness isn't scientific. I would say mm. that we don't have a good understanding of consciousness. So there's nothing inherently really scientific or unscientific all scientists do really is just study nature study so. nature in the physical realm right yeah but so you're operating under the assumption that consciousness is physical then who knows like i said we don't really understand i i assume that it's related to the brain because obviously when we see trauma to the brain and other things like that consciousness mm -hmm. is disrupted so is it a product of well it's a different experience or something like that yeah it's clear that in the physical system we need our senses and to feed us information and that's what our conscious experience is based upon right but we but we report on that experience that's how we know of it right you can't someone else in the chat was proposing when you you can't slice a brain to find an elephant in it can you or to find a you know consciousness not yet <laughs> Well, oh, you think at some point a knife sharp enough no. is going to cut the brain at, at just the right angle and then you will experience, you will somehow unlock, you know, there's the filter is even then, if you were observing consciousness from, from without it, the filter would always still be your consciousness, right? Like your processing, that's inevitable, right? Sure. But the problem is that I just... I don't understand like why it it has to be a, a different property from the mind or the brain. It's possible that consciousness is purely a physical property. We don't know. It's possible yeah. it's something else. Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking. Uh, in my view, I don't have any problem. In fact, the process of the scientific determinism wouldn't would entail or be based upon the fact that consciousness must be also a, a process of of the physical existence right that's i mean that's what it's predicated upon anyway now i think that there are correlates 
in our physical existence to consciousness. Like you are a neuroscientist, so you can slice open a brain and you can ask someone when you pinch them in, in the stomach whether they feel pain and then you can identify where the electrical activity is going on and then you say, well, there's pain, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like mapping consciousness is what we are doing from that perspective. But the only self, the only reported evidence that we have of it is self-reported evidence, which is awfully unscientific, wouldn't you say? What do you mean evidence of what? Consciousness? Yeah. You're saying it's only self-reported? No, I wouldn't say that. We observe mm. consciousness in other creatures. Like How? They make decisions. Mm, but decisions, that's they an arbitrary, that's an arbitrary lie. measure of complexity. Do you understand that? Is it? No, Absolutely. No, well, unless unless you unless you again go back and say there is no such thing as scientific determinism that you cannot there, predict the behavior of these animals. The difference or... between making a decision and just responding to your stimuli, and there's a difference between responding to stimuli mm -hmm. and just like the feedback or the natural or the laws of nature going through and things just following, I guess, the set rules of the universe as we've seen them so far. So you're saying that there are processing systems that don't obey the rest of the of the laws of the universe? No, I'm saying that there are processing systems which are more and less complex than each other. Oh, sure, yeah. And at some great level of complexity, you think arises human consciousness, and it's the coolest. That's seemingly, but... Who knows? Mm -hmm. I mean, is like, why is it that some people, you know, will suffer traumatic injuries and their consciousness will be very little affected, while others will, you know, go into a coma and not be a conscious human person again I don't know. for the rest of their life? I don't know. I'm not sometimes a... very similar uh, injuries in the brain will see very different results. Why do mm -hmm. these things happen? Is sure. it because consciousness is some other property, or mm. is it just because we uh, don't understand? Yeah, we were going to that arising yeah. of consciousness from the brain. Mm -hmm. How yeah. can we answer that question? It requires us to know information that we don't know. Uh, absolutely. Okay, so we were going to that. We were, um, we're, we're, we're reaching a point of agreement here. So first I was proposing things that it, my, my point here is to make it apparent to you that other processing systems and networks do not act much different than, say, our brain. Even though you're the neuroscientist and I'm sure you could school me on all matters pertaining the you know the intricate nature of the brain i think that this is just an observation and uh, you know i think it's just kind of true so what my, what my point was was present the perspective of um scientific determinism by which we do our science and predict behaviors of living and non-living uh systems as they relate to us right and um and then from that perspective that it is entirely arbitrary whether you call something a choice. It's an illusion of a choice at the, at the, at the very least, and, we'll, and we can talk about it, but from the perspective of scientific determinism where matter precedes mind, so to say, this is the truth, right? Even then, I'm not sure I would say that there's such a... It would say it's, there's an illusion of choice. I would just say that... Or that there's not a difference. I would say... I guess the idea, I guess, behind choice between me versus other feedback systems, like... Mm -hmm. uh, normal feedback system is something like, you know, air pressure equalizes over time when it's allowed to in, like, an open space. Like... Like air will flow from high pressure to low pressure. Uh, responding to stimuli, something like a plant, you know, it like grows in the direction of the sunlight. Mm -hmm. It's there's not really, from what we understand, a choice being made there. It's mm -hmm. more like the plant cells like detect sunlight, and it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I have to grow there because otherwise, because that's how I'm going to maximize. Yeah. So if I may, know, from Wait, if let I, me finish. Go no, on, please. sorry. I'm so sorry. Yep. And I guess, like, a choice would be, like, 
let's say like there's a slug and it's able to find an area where there's food and an area where there's not food. The difference is that with the slug making the choice, there's something going on in the brain where it's choosing in terms of like it has the option to do multiple things. Whereas something that's merely responding to its stimuli, it's not it's not the same where like it has options. Like it will always do what it's programmed to do specifically for that situation it's not able to respond as effectively as a conscious being which has many more options it can choose Mm -hmm. or i guess it can go through even if it doesn't have free will it has more ways to respond to the environment are you proposing that it kind of like scans different areas of its brain or something of the of the sorts or there's different calculations going on and we the system is not something that we totally understand no okay and so it seems like these systems are in higher orders of complexity but that's Mm -hmm. just seemingly right now like i said we really don't know right okay So So there could be, even in a scenario where there's not free will, Mm -hmm. I still see a difference between just responding to a stimuli versus actually, like, even if you don't make a choice, there's a a decision-making process that happens, and there's an ability to respond in multiple more ways than just responding to a stimuli. And like it's, these are apparently emergent, more complex systems, but who knows? Sure, but they are. Uh, so th- so they so so my point my point just was from the perspective of scientific determinism. This would just mean a higher order of complexity that we cannot understand, and and thus we consider it something like random or choice or something of the sorts. Is that fair? Sure, from the mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, from the, I, I, yeah from that's the not the only perspective. Determinism, that's perfectly fair, I would say. Okay, cool. But I'm not. Yeah, I'm not uh, sold I'm on not it sure too. Necessary. I'm about to get on your side now. Yeah, so I think that I think that there's also the consideration to be made from, uh, and you probably know more about this than me, so correct me if I'm wrong. But in quantum mechanics, it would seem that the double slit experiment proposes that something like a, like uh, that there is an observer effect right it it be precipitated to call it consciousness but when something is measured and we take note of it then reality manifests from what prior would have been just something like action potential that is acting in waveform and is in all places that in the, that it can occupy rather than as a particle that is in one single place. Is that right? I mean, I don't think that's the. I think you're talking about like the like the Oppenheimer, where you're talking about like how you can know with an electron what its speed is or what its what its position is, but you can't know both. Oh no, I'm talking about the double slit experiment. I think it, they might be linked, but I'm just yeah, broad strokes. Well, like here. I think that the 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 idea behind like why you can't measure something without know changing it is not because like well, i think that's just because like the physical act of you know measuring whatever you're mm-hmm. trying to examine has an effect on it like you can't really measure something without affecting it right thus the observer effect right yeah yeah so so when we measure something we affect reality that before that was kind of it, it, in terms of in terms of this particular experiment, it would have occupied all 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 the patterns that it can occupy in waveform, right? And the pattern that it would form when not observed on the wall that it's uh, projected onto would be the pattern of like potential, basically something like choice, you could say. I mean, all the possibilities it could be. Right, all the possibilities it could be, before, and 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 it's not that we don't know. Interact. Yeah, and it's not that we don't know, it's that it's all the possibilities that it could be, right? And it acts as a wave. I mean, to be 
to be frankly honest, the more complex, like uh, I guess, positions on this experiment, I'm not really qualified. Oh, fair, fair. To talk about. Uh huh. But well, my point I was mean, just. I guess I, I guess we're like really reaching the end of the point where I'm really qualified to talk about. To be honest. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, so so all that I'm all that I'm proposing is that there are ideas out there that could pro that could promote the idea that consciousness is every bit as fundamental or that or that mind or experience is every bit as fundamental as physical reality and and that uh, and there are many physicists right who who believe this like uh, phys physicists high grade physicists right like um anton seilinger is one of my favorite and he is very much into uh in 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 charge of a lot of the entanglement experiments that we're doing in you know large observatories and whatnot um so the only way mm, oh I, i'm gonna go back to your to your prior position right the, the part where we don't know the way that we could conceptualize of choice and perhaps mind having an impact in physical reality would be only if it was as essential or as it preceded reality as if uh, like um that is to say physical reality wouldn't you say i'm sorry i need you to say that one more time um so before we were talking about um how we don't know that the systems are that the system of the universe is deterministic necessarily in essence which implies the alternative, which is something like choice or free will. And I am saying that... It implies we don't know. Huh? It implies we don't know. Well, if things are not predetermined, then there's something like choice. I mean, there's, there's, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a polarity here, right? It's not... Yeah, but just because we haven't found something that says one way or the other doesn't mean we have a good understanding. Oh, that's okay. But we can still describe logically what the processes are, no? Yeah, but I think that it goes too far to say that it implies one or the other. You don't think one implies the... You don't think that if existence isn't that. predetermined, then it's not predetermined? Because that's kind of what I'm saying. It's one or the other, but we don't know which right. one. Right, yeah, that's what I'm proposing. So I'm saying that if there was a, a non-predetermined existence, then consciousness might be an essential aspect of it or choice right and that is what i am what i i'm not proposing that i hold a truth on this respect i am saying that it is conceivable which is the same thing that you were saying uh -huh. in essence earlier i mean yeah a lot of things are possible but i'm just saying i don't really see the evidence to support that wait to support which one the idea that you know consciousness is like some fundamental uh property what about you being it like i'm saying it, it could be an emergent property i don't know it could be purely physical it could be something that's the result of non-intelligent factors but how could it be purely physical if physicality doesn't manifest without without it being measured but physicality does manifest without it being measured. We oh, just okay. don't know what it is. Oh, it does manifest without it being measured? Yeah, the I mean, these different states of matter, they exist at some point. They're doing things out there in the universe. We don't necessarily know what they're doing at any given point. Oh, I see. But that doesn't mean that they haven't manifested. I see. Okay. So... How about this premise then? Imagine you are measuring light from a with a with a very powerful telescope, right? And we know that light will travel in in uh, in waveform, right? And and it will not manifest itself as a particle until it's measured, right? So let's say you are the one that's looking in, at a telescope that's about to capture light from billions of or millions of years away. Is it true that when you when the light hits your telescope and you get to measure it, that the light now appears not as a wave of potential in the way that it has presumably been traveling for millions of years, but rather that it, it, that it, that it now is a particle that retroactively 
now has a history of having followed a single path. Is that true? But I thought that, you know, I haven't taken, you know, the physics of this in a while, but I, I thought that photons were unique because they simultaneously display, you know, uh, properties of, of waves being, and particles. Yeah, before, yeah that's contingent particles. upon the observer. Right, the observer so, effect. That's that's the the great mystery. But I don't think that part is the observer effect. I think the oh, observer okay. effect is the effect that you have on that particle by measuring it. Right. right. Yep. But didn't I? Doesn't it already have a path that it's followed in a history and all that? No, it would have been traveling in all paths, right? That's what that's what we're that's what the experiment proposes is that there's if there's nothing to measure well, I, it, if nothing I, measures. I, to be honest, I need to I need to I guess read more on this because oh. I'm not really understanding. To be honest, fair. And I'm not sure I'm really qualified to speak on this. I see, fair. Well, yeah, you Loki have been telling me that I'm not either, and that's okay. I have my reasons, I think, and they're all logical, and that's why I am confident and happy to invite high-grade scientists like yourself here to talk to me and tell me that i'm wrong i mean i don't i don't want to say that you're wrong mm -hmm. i think that's too strong it's hard to prove something wrong mm. but i guess the the equally strong like scientific argument is to say that i haven't seen the evidence that convinces me of your position yet which so what am i what what am i uh shaky on would you say i want to improve I guess like give me a give me a, a whole uh, like an overview again because we've said a lot of stuff and I'd want to like have something more concise to respond oh. to. Well, on what realm would you like to would you like I to guess, make like, a statement? I I guess the the thing that I guess I have the most issue with is mm -hmm. that I don't really see the evidence to say that you know intelligence is a. a could or is a more like baseline property of the universe like i'm not like i i, I think but you consider yourself intelligent i mean just i guess kind of just by definition right yeah uh, yeah exactly <laughs> anything that we but can I'm talk like, about right? i'm not i'm just i'm not i'm not sure that i think like i said that the, the definition of like i guess what the useful part of intelligence is the whether or not we make decisions and whether or not that is of free will and I'm, I'm i'm not i'm not convinced that i see that there are decisions being made oh sure by elements out there in the universe oh like, i see like do they have their own baseline intelligence or is every or is i mean just a that... natural order of things that they're following blindly mm. i guess blindly is a bad word i guess are, are things just following are they just doing what they're doing because that's what they have to do because mm -hmm. those are the rules of the universe i see well from my perspective i think you could conceptualize that the universe seeing as it's all made of the same shit, functions in the same way through and through and that you would be consistent with it whatever the rules are that's my i mean that's what i'm saying so i'm saying that that intelligence from that perspective is an arbitrary measure of complexity and of human understanding and correlating right you're saying i understand or i think i know what 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 intelligence is and and you attribute for example the ability to make choices and potentially that that a, that a human being contemplates or that other beings contemplate choices and this enhances their ability to survive so it's a higher order of complexity than than something that that pokes at you i don't understand um i don't understand and, and why it, it's why identifying that kind of complexity would be arbitrary though because if it's a, if it's an emergent property that only exists from that complexity so do you then know then be, let me I ask you one know. thing i don't know but right. if it is i'm saying if it is an emergent property from that complexity mm -hmm. then logically that complexity would be the uh, i guess <laughs> how you would identify intelligence yeah but those are big ifs um i guess sure from a from a human perspective that's what we would know to correlate with intelligence as we perceive it because it's what we know right and the rest is very difficult to know so all i am proposing is that all the systems are extremely complex and they are all working in tandem with each other throughout not just earth but the entire universe 
and that seems apparent the more we look into them i think yeah i would i would agree with that so so in that sense if you watch uh, uh there's there's a couple of documentaries that i would love to recommend to you if you are open to 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 watching them they are wonderful one is called connected on netflix have you checked it out by chance Okay, so it's a it's a it's a documentary on how different areas and parts of the planet are interconnected in these crazy fucking ways, and how there are emergent patterns. Um, like, uh, hold up, I'm gonna look this up. Uh, do you know Benford's law, the mathematical law? Uh, no. It's a so Benford's law is fucking crazy. It's an observation, essentially. More, you know, it's an observation that's called a law. It's not so much an intrinsic property uh, an intrinsic mathematical property of 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 a system in a way that it is apparent or obvious but it seems as though as if most things on earth you could say by chance or by randomness uh, appear uh in certain patterns including patterns of humanity like in terms of uh even world records where where most world records say on a given field like we'll start with uh, uh 60 percent of number ones and then go to number twos uh at a lesser percentage and so so on so forth until the number nine so there are there are my point is patterns throughout all of nature including yeah, humanity I'm, that I'm are not, i'm not disagreeing uh -huh. with that though oh sure okay so i've looked this um, up and i i think I, I was familiar with the concept but not the name because this is something cool. like how they used to identify they like falsify data and statistics. yeah exactly yeah yeah <laughs> yeah isn't that cool they can yeah. identify it because it doesn't follow the pattern basically yeah now there are patterns i'm sure you're you know the fibonacci sequence that is repeated all over nature and all sorts of mathematical patterns out there what i am proposing is that you are as everything else is exactly that And some patterns like, are a little bit more complex. Is that I think that the fact that those patterns have layers of complexity is what might like. I don't think I don't mm. think that there's like an arbitrary. I don't think it's arbitrary to look and see if there's layers of complexity that arise to create a new system, like a new subsystem. Like that might be like a like consciousness might be just like a subsystem of everything else. Who knows? How it do you mean by a subsystem? Be, Excuse my ignorance. Like all these other, like all these other properties, like you say, like you know, like a, like a, like a system of like um, cells can communicate with each other, mm -hmm. and we may or may not consider that to be intelligent. Mm. And your body can communicate with each other, you know, like hormones and other sorts of signaling, mm -hmm. you know, um, substrates and things like that. And so, like, we, is mm -hmm. intelligence just like? the top of all that put together mm. or is like is there something new that comes apart like is it is it greater ah. than some of its parts or is it just like you know that's a great something that yeah. emerges like when you have all the right pieces together mm -hmm. are there different kinds of intelligence are different intelligent creatures getting their intelligence in the same way these mm -hmm. are all things that you know we just really don't know yeah so you so you're bringing forth though a, a wonderful evidence though i think like because what you're describing of is is of these systems that are emergent like you are emergent system of 37.5 trillion cells for example right and you don't know whether those 37.5 trillion cells cells are intelligent because you think that they are i mean somehow they arrange themselves in such a ways that they make all of your organs and, and your brain and all the synapses and all the chemicals inside of all of your body that will make you react to everything else, right? I would say that is, I mean, fundamentally the equivalent of intelligence because it's you. Is it not? But so if you are to consider point? something intelligence, yeah, where is the point of, yeah, yeah. I mean. Who knows? Like mm. a lot of this comes down to just like how you define at what point something is intelligent i don't know okay like but I, here i'm thinking mm -hmm. go on i was just thinking of like i watched a video a long time ago by i think michio kaku and he was just saying things like the most basic form of intelligence in his mind was like a thermometer that can read mm. like the, the temperature of the room mm -hmm. and then like the more advanced intelligence would be like 
a thermostat system where it takes the temperature and it decides based upon its programming to, you know, turn on the heat or turn on the, the cooling or to not do anything at all. Mm -hmm. And it, like, it, it, and then eventually, you know, you have an AI, which is just like talking to people and asking them, Oh, Hey, are you cold or are you warm? Do you want me to turn this on or something mm -hmm. like that? And just like, at what point in that system, emerges the intelligence like why do we call the one that can talk to you an ai or something like that if it's really just like a more advanced computer is it really making all that many decisions or is it different from like the bit more basic thermostat like when 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 does intelligence happen is the question i'm guessing yeah i mean yeah it's that's entirely arbitrary i think that's what i proposed and then you said it's not ar arbitrary right i'm and... saying i don't know if it's arbitrary and i think that oh. from a certain perspective it might make sense to say that it's not mm, i see i mean as far as insofar as it's a it's a way to communicate but think of uh, subconscious processes that your body undergoes your body surely is intelligent as it can make a banana into a human being. I mean, that I don't know how the fuck to do that, but your body knows, and it does it. Yeah, but I guess, like, the the, the main question is, like, is it is it is it making a decision, or is it just doing what it has to do? Mm, I see. Yeah, from a perspective, again, scientific determinism, we would go back to, to that it's probably just doing what it has to do, the same as everything else. Um, but from the perspective of free will, we could say that choice has an impact in physical reality and that, you know, and that maybe it is. In fact, that maybe, in fact, there are systems capable of transforming reality to something like their will. Though I don't see a necessity for a will in, in that sense. I'm fine with the illusion, <laughs> personally, of, of choice. It's every bit of, of a roller coaster anyway for me. Because I don't know what's coming, so I'm not uh, I'm not picky. And to me, it seems as though as if the conscious realm and the physical realm are correlated and codependent and emerge from one another. That's what I think is a, a reasonable a reasonable take on the matter. Um, obviously, I don't know that, but I suspect that because it seems most reasonable to me i'm just uh, i don't know i don't know i it, i think it's entirely possible it's it's a, just a purely physical result sure and then we'd have scientific determinism it's i think scientific determinism is possible i I hope it's not. I'd like to have free will. <laughs> Why? Why? What is free will anyway? Like, don't you get just a limited set of choices provided to you by your environment anyway? That's true. But I don't know. It's just, just something very emotional, I guess, instantly when mm. you think about it. Just ah, I wanna because we want to like, feel special. Yeah, I want, yeah, mm. I want to I feel like, you know, at least I have some yeah. modicum of choice. You know, we all got brought into this world not by choice we did not get brought into it we emerged it. from it yeah I, scientifically I, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean yeah. just like yeah it's just like we didn't really choose to exist or to be on earth or to need to eat or to drink or to have all these needs or wants or anything like that so i guess there's a there's a very i guess not just you know, like it's part of the ego, really, the idea that mm -hmm. you want to have at least a little bit of choice. But yeah. I get, uh, but I'm, uh, but really, when I think about it, mm. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think, I, yeah, it's easier, it's I, easier I, to not be sure than to side yeah. on the on the side of we of, of there's no choice, and your environment is feeding you the information that you take to process, and it's really coming uh, from that in that in that sense, right? That. That, that you're shaped by your surroundings and by your society inevitably and, and so on and so forth. And, but the thing is, I think that's beautiful and wonderful too. And there's an awe to be, fine, to be found in life because the system is so very perfect when you choose to see it that way, when you choose to see the system as an intelligent system. Because what you find everywhere 
is evidence that it is. It's fucking perfect. And maybe if we were in control, we would have, you know, <laughs> maybe it wouldn't be so perfect. Yeah, but I guess I guess this <laughs> goes back to the part where we're just trying to define, like, how do we define intelligence? Mm -hmm. Yeah, from my perspective, the universe has a capacity for intelligence, whatever you want the definition to be, in so long as you are willing to have a definition of it, because you are part of the universe, you're it. I'm not, I don't, I don't know, I just, I just, I, I'm not sure that it makes sense to describe the other processes as the same as, like, cognition. Mm. I think we're going in circles now. I don't think we're going to agree Fair. on the definition. Okay. I don't, yeah. Well, I really appreciate your time regardless, and I would love to uh, talk to you more often or whenever you feel like you want to intervene or teach me something I really love um what you do and i'd love to learn more about the brain and and um and anything that you think is worth talking about i would love to talk with to talk to you again so thank you yeah all right thank you take care man